Hi, welcome back to my lessons on linear perspective. Today, we're going to move on to the one-point perspective letters worksheet. The first thing I'm going to do, as you can see on my screen, in the drawing area on the bottom quadrant, I have drawn in a horizon line and a dot for a vanishing point. Make sure that when you draw your horizon line, you've made your ruler perpendicular to the sides of your drawing area, as indicated on the screen. If you'd like to use something like a circle template to draw in the circular forms for the letter O, you're welcome to do so. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to freehand in the shape of the circular form. My primary focus is that learners understand the perspective elements, and I don't think necessarily it's important right now that I focus on using templates to uh, draw in the generic shapes. When sketching your shapes, I would encourage learners to draw lightly, but I'm going to draw a little bit darker than I normally would in order for the lines to show up easily on the camera. Next, I'm going to draw in the letter E on the bottom right quadrant of my drawing area. I'm first going to draw a series of horizontal lines and vertical lines. I think it's approximately six horizontal lines, or exactly six, and then three vertical lines to help compose the letter E. I made my letter about an inch and a quarter tall and about an inch wide. Now, for people who aren't used to drawing letters like this, this may look like a jumble of lines, but it'll look like the letter E in just a moment. Next, I'm going to do six horizontal lines. If you get confused at all, just refer back to the worksheet for the placement of these lines. And feel free to pause the video to examine and scrutinize further. So while it looks like a uh, aligned piece of paper at this point, by using my eraser, I'm able to indicate the shape of the block letter E. I'm going to go ahead and darken some of the lines so you can see them better on the camera. Now the letter E, because it's a right angle based shape, it's going to use a lot of the familiar methods we've discussed in prior lessons on linear perspective. The easiest way to explain it is just to show you how to connect those corners of the letter E back to the vanishing point using my ruler. And there are a lot of corners on this E. The best rule to follow is, after you've dotted all the corners, connect all the dots back to the vanishing point without drawing through the letter itself. So some of these dots you wouldn't connect back because they would have to cross through the body of the shape. I'm just going to connect the dots back that don't affect the shape. As you can see here, the letter E. Now, this corner here, some of it can be connected back to the vanishing point, but as soon as it makes contact with the body of the shape, I'm going to stop. Now I've done all of the orthogonal lines, or the diagonal lines, back towards the vanishing point for the letter E. The O is a little different. We're going to use the method called sweeping, and here's how it's done. You place your pencil on the vanishing point, you line the ruler up against the pencil tip, and I'm going to rotate the ruler towards the form of the letter O until it touches the edge. When it touches the edge, I'm then going to draw in the orthogonal line, like so. I'm going to do the same thing on the outside edge of the letter O. Pencil on the dot, ruler on the pencil, sweep until it touches the letter, stop, draw in the orthogonal line. Now that all that's left on both of the shapes is to cut them off to give them the sense of depth. With the letter E, it's actually fairly simple the way we're going to do it here. I'm just going to pick one of the three orthogonal lines and make a dot. I'll start on the bottom one right here. I will then line my ruler up to the bottom edge of the drawing area, make sure it's perpendicular, and I'm going to draw upward until it makes contact with the next orthogonal line. Now I have a dot, line, and a dot. 
I'm going to line my ruler up to the side of the drawing area, and I'm going to start from that dot and draw right until it makes contact with the next orthogonal line. Some of you more advanced or discerning learners may have realized that sometimes the letters would be cut off right here or here, inside, visibly inside the shape of the letter E itself. On this example, that is not necessarily the case. I have moved up the depth of the letter E so that you wouldn't have to deal with those types of complex perspective arrangements. Next, on the letter O, I would suggest within the confines of these two orthogonal lines, we're going to draw that same exact shape again. And it may seem a little bit much, but there's a reason why. I'm going to start by drawing my circular shape right here. I want to make it as similar to the original shape as I can. Next, I'm going to draw the inside of that shape. And while it may seem like, well, we do have a little more information than we actually need, it is important. Unless the letter is transparent, you wouldn't be able to see this line right here. So I'm going to go ahead and erase the content I don't need there. Next, I'm going to erase this line right here and the lines inside the original letter O. This indicates the opening of the letter right here and the outside depth of the letter. If I've done my job correctly, I'll have my three-dimensional form for the letter O. The best way to explain this curve right here is you want to have the same curve right here as you do on the circle right here. All right. Now all that's left is cleaning up the orthogonal line information on the O and the letter E that I no longer need. If you made the decision to draw too dark, it'll be harder to erase that content that's not necessary anymore. So I would encourage learners to draw lightly so that you can erase it with more ease. This is it.